Could this be a chance for Uganda to compete as one of Africa's top gold exporters? And how will this help the country's economy? Arnold Segawa, a Ugandan journalist based in South Africa, joins us now. Arnold, why is this happening right now? Uh, thanks for the invitation, Maggie. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. On one end, uh, you do have a coffee sector, an agriculture sector, that has hardly had an investment uh, from the days of uh, Idi Amin and even Milton Obote. I know usually when people hear Idi Amin, they're quite surprised, but he did have some particular investment, at least from the public sector, going into some of the sectors. Yeah. Now, this has stagnated, and as a result, we are seeing uh, that... Uh, the, the rewards are actually the yields have just been stagnant and just flat for the longest time. On the other hand, uh, the gold has issued in something that's quite interesting, which is away from the exploration, there's value addition. Now, yeah. this is synonymous with the refineries uh, that have come online, and ultimately the product is not as raw as how you get it from the ground. Arnold, briefly, what potential does, you, does gold have to turn around Uganda's economy? That's, that's a tough one, Maggie, because on one end, if you look at the gold prices, uh, spot prices on the world market, gold is stagnant. Unless people are worried about inflation or uh, trade tensions between Xi Jinping and President Trump, that's when they'll run to the gold. Now, uh, value addition is one thing. That's a good thing. But on the other hand, it's still very unclear how much gold Uganda holds. Unlike the oil, where we do know that there's 6.5 billion barrels in the ground, it's very, very unclear how much gold is actually in Uganda, let alone uh, the public policies that, and the gold, the mining policies that yeah. are in place to make sure that this will actually invite uh, investors into the space. So it's very unclear yeah. right now. And uh, yeah. let's face it, we don't know how much so, gold is in the country. So here's the dilemma, Arnold. Most resource-rich African countries are also the poorest with a lot of corruption. Some have come out to call it a curse. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, definitely, we've heard of uh, the, 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 the curse, uh, the, the black curse, the, 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 the oil curse, Nigeria, no stranger to this. But uh, for me, if you look at it from an economic perspective, definitely the Dutch disease here comes to play. Why? Because on one end, uh, we're looking at Uganda discovering oil and gold and all these minerals, and that has, in a way, left... Uh, unemployment uh, into some of the other sectors really undertended to. So agriculture has been left on the backside, and this just takes us to the Dutch disease as it did happen a few centuries ago and leaves many wondering, okay, so if Hoima is doing well on one end on the uh, mining and the mineral space and the exploration, what happens to agriculture in Hoima? It's really left unattended to. So uh, th that definitely is uh, something that we need to watch going forward.